let's go ahead and get started then. All right, like I mentioned a moment ago, my name is Austin. I am client growth manager here at Param. Um, you might recognize me if you've been attending some of our previous webinars. Um, we like to do these once a month, going over various features, topics, and updates that Param has to offer. Um, the last couple were on the app and client portal as well as staff portal and you know super admin access. To this this month's uh, webinar is going to be on <clears throat> excuse me how to add your data in Param. Um, so we're going to be going over a few different methods. I won't spoil it just yet. Um, this might be a topic that you're familiar with. Hopefully everyone that's joining today is going to learn a few things. Um, but yeah, while I'm presenting, my colleague Alo is here. So he's going to be, uh, at, at, at your, he's going to be available, excuse me, uh, to answer any questions you might have. So there's a little questions and answers section right down there. Feel free to dr uh, drop in a question you have. He'll be happy to answer it live while we're doing the presentation. And then at the very end, we are also going to leave, leave a few minutes for additional questions as well. So don't be worried that, oh, the webinar is over and I missed my opportunity. So we'll save a few minutes. And then, of course, I'll mention it later. You can always reach out to us, myself or Alo, who's in our, our support manager. We can always ask any questions and reach out that method. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and get this kicked off and ready to go. Um, and learn about bringing some data into your system. All right, so a few things we're gonna go, let's just go over the agenda for today. Uh, so first off, we're just gonna go over the couple different methods that you have of adding the data into the system. We have a bulk upload and then also a manual enter, but I'll go into that in a moment. We have, uh, oh, Jesus, I didn't correct this. Um, so wrong, incorrect slide, but uh, what data can be imported? Um, of course, and then we're going to go overview of the importable data as well as, oh, apologies, that was my mess up. So, and then a manual data. Um, so apologies on the uh, agenda mistake. And then we're going to go and visit this all in the site itself. And then, and again, mentioned before, questions in the answer session. All right, so a couple of different methods of bringing your data in. There is a data import. So this is allows you for large amounts of employees, clients, locations, events to be brought into Param. This is very common for our medium and large organizations. The reason I say that is they're, of course, having a lot more information that need to be brought in. Um, very typical for these large and medium organizations right when you start out with Param. So um, it might not be, you know, your your relevant to you if you've already been using Param for some time, but certainly worth knowing if you have a large jump in growth with your with your company and you and you can that's one way of easily bringing this in without having to spend all the time uh, manually entering it, which I'm going to go over in a moment. Um, very common, like I said, for new companies just starting to use Param and then also coming from another system. Um, the benefits of that is they're able to export it from that previous system and then bring it in. And then last thing, this not, it, the re simple technical requirements for imports are gonna be a CSV format. Uh, we do have templates, which I will be going in and showing you how to access those, but that's a quick overview of what, our, uh, what you can do on bulk and bring in large amounts of data is gonna be the data imports. Uh, the other method of course is manual data entry. Um, the reason, obviously, every system is going to have manual data entry, so you're going to be able to go field by field, enter that information. It does give you that personal touch. However, there uh, additionally, um, the reason we really bring this up is not all data can be imported. Um, the data import really helps get the initial information in, and then, of course, you do the final touching um, uh, within the system. Easy, and then of course, easy for maintenance, maintaining the systems, and of course, all fields can be adjusted where imports are limited, of course. Um, all right, last thing is, I mentioned in the following following slide right here is so employees, clients, locations, events, those, so those are the current importing capabilities which can be brought in. Um, going in is we have other fields, other uh, features within Param that, at the moment are not being are not capable of doing mass imports. Um, 
for various reasons, technical reasons, plus, um, you know, the uniqueness of it. Um, so some of those are some subcontractors, positions, uh, pay, pay and charge rules, departments, assets, and docu documents, in, uh, uh, and documents that can be internal usage. Um, the reason for this is positions, there's depending, it's very unique. Um, it's something that definitely needs to be done and focused on and done manually. Pay and charge rules, depending on your organization, from my experience, I have clients doing very simple pay rules all the way to very complex uh, night, day, weekends, all of these sort of complexities. Um, so that's it's just technically very difficult to create some sort of importing process. And, it, uh, and additionally, you are, met, you are basically messing and adjusting someone's payment. So you want to make sure that's done correctly. All right, uh, going into the data imports and what can be done. As I mentioned previously, data import, you go, you do your data imports to get the initial data in, and then you have to, you know, do your fine, you know, fine adjustments. So what you're, what we're looking at here is one of the imports that can be done. This is going to be employees. As you can see, we have a, a pretty decent amount of stuff that can be imported here. So those are the fields that can be imported on that initial aspect. The for employees, uh, the bare minimum, if you were just, just get them into the system, you have say 200 employees or maybe even as small as 50, um, and you just wanna get those first employees in and get them access to the system, the bare minimum would need to be email address, first name and last name, or, or uh, without the full name, just do full name, et cetera. The rest you don't have to, they're not required. Uh, those are just optional. Uh, we have an additional method of bringing employees in. This is going to be by invite, and I'll be showing you how to do that in a moment. And then lastly, we have manual. So, of course, we have everything you can do. Uh, you can access and do everything from the CSV files, et cetera. You can add the name, emails, et cetera, um, manually. But, of course, you can add the position, staff portal access, um, and then uh, quite a few other things. I'm not going to go over each one of these uh, bullet points. We have additionally another one is location. So you're going to be wanting to add a location and client name. Uh, if you are from, if you're not familiar with Param and you're just sort of attending this webinar for uh, for interest, um, locations and clients uh, they do need to be linked together. So you're going to be wanting to do locations uh, or clients first um, at the same or you know relatively close to each other because they do need to be linked together. So these are gonna be required fields. And then of course, the variety of other information um, that's gonna be part of the CSV import. And then of course, same thing for all those fields for data import, but, and then even more so. So there are pay rules you can associate with them. There are documents, et cetera. Again, we have clients. So like I've said, mentioned a moment ago, clients and locations are gonna be linked. So you're gonna to want to make sure you have those done pretty much around the same time. Um, if you have any questions, I know this is, might sound a little confusing, but if you do have any questions on how to do data imports, um, I'm not going over the step-by-step -step process. I will show you how to get going. Um, we can certainly organize a call and we our, our support team can help walk you through it as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to be going over it step by step, drag and dropping fields, that sort of thing. Um, client and name, et cetera. Of course, that's going to be mandatory. And then again, on the right hand side, pay rules, internal do uh, documents, internal notes, um, contact persons, and then of course, client access to the client portal. This is going to have to be done manually. Then lastly, the last one is events. This events can be imported. Um, so there's a few different fields, uh, events, I, uh, title, location, et cetera. And again, manual, these can be done easily, just really gets the, gets the data into the system. And then once you are happy with it, once it's in there, you know, you might have your event manager ma uh, manage that event. They can add in the final details, um, as you can see here. So if there's any sort of shift reminders, geofencing requirements, um, show shifts. So get the shifts, sh get the shifts entered into the event and then show shift is a option to trigger it, get it all, get it all set up, then activate it. So your, your staff can all see, see all the information all at once, but I'll go into that at an, in another, uh, later date. 
All right. Um, but yeah, that was everything I wanted to show about what kind of access is. So let's go ahead and go into the site. Excuse me. All right. Let's go ahead and start with the first thing that I went over, which was employees. So we'll go over into the people field here. We have employees. So the two different processes, of course, again, data imports and manual. Uh, manual add, manually adding an employee is as easy as clicking that add a person button right there. So that can be done by just simply clicking on it, filling in the information and proceeding. Obviously we have positions we can be adding here. Again, this is gonna be a manual process. We don't have ability to do that um, in the data import. Uh, then any sort of departments, of course, first name, last name, as you can see, the bare, bare minimum requirements right down here. While we're here, and I'll, whenever I am here with a client, I always talk about this one, is give access to staff portal. Uh, this is gonna be turned on by default. Uh, this is to what to take into consideration if you wanna turn this off or keep it turned on is if you're starting out with Param Fresh, uh, you're, you're, you yourselves are a new client to us. Um, what's, I would typically say turn this off because you just wanna get everyone into the system in the very beginning. And uh, once you have your entire param environment set up exactly how you want it, how you're gonna be operating and using the system, um, after that point is then you start granting access to your employees. You don't wanna be granting them access, maybe a few here and then a few next week or something, and then changes are still occurring. Because if I was to leave this on and, plus, and continue through the person, employee, um, setup process, as soon as I click save and continue, it will send them out their first login details. And then of course, they're gonna be logging in or maybe wondering what the heck is this, um, that sort of thing. So me personally, I always recommend turning it off unless you're already actively using Param, this is gonna be a new employee that you know is gonna pick up shifts tomorrow, then go ahead and continue that way. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward on this end. Let's go ahead and look at where imports are gonna be um, for employees. So there's a little button on the right-hand side. This is where you'll see that dropdown for import from file. <clears throat> so um, this is where you're gonna be accessing, uh, or sorry, not accessing, but drag and dropping or selecting your file. So you click this, that opens your folders. Um, to understand how the format of the imported data needs to be, we do have a template right here. So if I open that up, that will go ahead and show you the template. As you can see in red is the compulsory information. So bare minimum, first, last name, and email address. As you can see, the rest of the information is there. You would, you would simply, in this case, go ahead and download this as a CSV file, enter and copy paste, enter your data in, uh, into the into that file, and then you would go back to here, select it either clicking this or dragging and dropping, and then the process will begin. There is a simple drag and drop process for matching the fields that you have or the columns with what the field is within Param. Again, I'm not going to be going over that at the at the moment. Um, that would be we. I'd be happy to go over it with you individually in a call. So free, feel free to reach out if if you would like a little bit of help on that. Um, and that would be, that essentially sums up the importing process for employees. Um, I will show where the rest of the importing process is for the other fields, um, but let's go back into the last final option for bringing employees in within Param. That last option is gonna be invite. If you didn't, if you caught it earlier, you might've seen it, but there's gonna be that invite button right there. What this allows you to do is put some instructions right down here. Um, of course, your own unique message if you want to, and you would be typing in their uh, email addresses, and that would send out an invite. We also have invitations under this dropdown uh, here. Same same premise, sending out the email, seeing if they accepted it, that sort of status, um, and going from there. Um, and yeah, that's going to be the way to be adding your employees in for you know data import. Real quick, like I mentioned before, um, some of those fields are gonna be manual processes. So a couple of those that I mentioned were say positions. Um, so when you add, so as you can see, this is a good example. I did import all these, these dummy data employees into the system. 
Um, a key things to take away are when you do a data import, the accesses are automatically turned off. Um, when we did the per when we did the individual adding of the employee, that was automatically turned on, of course, but you had the ability to turn that off if you wanted to. With the data import, by default, the system is going to not grant them access just yet, which honestly is the really the best move, especially if you're just starting with Param for what I told you earlier. You want to just get the data in there, start getting the system configured, then grant all the access. Of course, the, the proper way to do the one way to do that is to, you know, take all those little buttons that we're seeing here. Uh, oh, froze first, froze for a moment. Okay, sorry, it's freezing. Um, one way is to take the little toggle signs right here manually, or we do have a simple process of tap, ticking the little box on the left hand side with the selected is granting the access right there. Um, so you'll be able to grant the access and, or of course, revoke the access, uh, all on a bulk level. Um, so you're not, you know, spending the additional time, um, you know, ticking all those, uh, for, you know, in this case, I only have 52, but I've definitely seen clients or work with clients with multiple hundreds. All right, let's go ahead and, oh, additionally, sorry, while I was here is this is also where you'd be able to add those positions, add those departments or add locations. So add locations is adding to a preferred person list. That's, that's a whole nother conversation, um, but we, we can have that. We can happy to answer any questions on that later. Um, all right, that will conclude the segment on adding employee data into the system. Let's go ahead and go into clients and locations. So with regards to, let's start with clients. Um, I sort I talked about it earlier, clients and locations are gonna be linked. The way that if you were doing a mass import of either of those, or of course, both of those, um, really what I typically do is I start with clients. Um, I give the clients a identification number, as you can see here. And then with regards to the location import, there is a section where you will be linking it to a client. You like there'll be the location column and then the client ID. Um, this is the data that you'll be putting into that client ID. That way that they knows that Apex Cure Pharmaceuticals manages X location, Y location, Z location. What we're looking at here is the clients list. In adding clients is as easy as just clicking that I add client button in the top right. Go ahead, add in a name, same process of adding employee, follow the steps along the, along the path. Um, going back to the clients, the same is there's an import button up here in the top right. Same process, we do have that downloadable template right here. As you can see, we have the client name. I mentioned in a moment ago is that unique identifier. So 1003, 1004, or however you like to label it. You can, it can be a number, it can be a letter, that sort of thing. Then drag and drop into the system, or drag and drop into the box, excuse me, or select it from your list, which will open your folders. Um, and then lastly, we have, or not lastly, excuse me, the next up is your locations. Again, as you can see, Apex Cure Pharmaceuticals, when I did the data import, I linked with that unique identifier. Um, we have adding those into the system is again, either adding an individual location as we see here, uh, with again, mentioned for the 15th time, uh, clients and locations do need to be linked. So starting with the clients, we now have a client on our dropdown list of clients here. So we can go ahead and link that manually, as you can see. Or if you want to, you can create a new client as you're creating that location. Um, you know, there's they both have their benefits, but if you are setting up that client first, you can already add all that data. Right now it will create a client, but it would just be a name. Um, so it's going to be a, you know, very limited, of course. So it's really up how do you how really up to you how you like to approach it. Um, then, of course, the same thing for data imports. You have the ability to have access that sample data. Go ahead and have a look at one of those. We have that. We have a little bit of information right here. Compulsory location name, identification number, some uh, demo demo data, as you can see here. Um, again, 
Client unique identifier, as I mentioned before, that's going to be compulsory. So you want to have that in there. And then location name. Um, this is what links the location to the client that you're working for. Um, actually, you know what? A good point to mention is I certainly have some clients like it. Some of you might not even have multiple clients. These are all locations that you manage from your own organization. So what you would do in that case is you would set yourself up. You would set your own company up as a location. So in this case, I have myself, this test site, ZZ Param Healthcare, and I would just be linking my company's unique identifier, which I set up in, the, in that client profile, and I would be linking that to all the locations. So that's definitely another approach. I certainly have clients that are doing it that way. Um, and you don't have to worry about, you know, all the different clients and everything. Um, all right, then moving on, lastly is going to be events coming in here. Um, events, this is the, this is definitely going to be uh, more relevant or oh, really only relevant to those that have the events module. Events is a paid additional module, um, not, ne not necessary for everyone. So this is not, again, might not be relevant to you. Um, but still worth not understanding and seeing what the potential is. Adding an adding event manual is easy as, again, that big button in the top right, add new event. This allows you to access all the information, um, selecting the client, location, start, end time, uh, all the crucial information. I'm not going to go over all of this at the moment. This is something certainly we can have in a one-on-one -on -one call. So feel free to reach out if you're interested in using or adding the events module to your, your subscription. Um, filling in all the data, et cetera. That process is super straightforward. Importing, again, also very straightforward. Um, the, however, the only thing is we do not have a template for the import. Um, so however, over here underneath is gonna be all the information you would need. So each one of those rows would uh, be in a, one of the additional columns at the title. So uh, you just need to simply use your own format, however you get it. The, re the reason we have this is the clients that have to utilize the events import, they're typically getting the information through um, not a uniform process. It might be an email here or a text message there. So it's not the template, um, us not having a template is not really a, a big factor in it because the data is going to be have to be digitized um, some way. And so the form, the the excuse me, the the CSV file that you're going to be using for data imports, it would be really homemade anyways. Um, so we don't have a template for that in that case. Um, but anyways, that really just goes over everything that I wanted to go over on regards to adding and getting your data in. Um, what I what I do at Param as the growth manager is I typically work with clients from the sales phase all the way to the onboarding to account management phase. And what I really see with uh, getting them from just starting with Param, going to onboarding and then a lifetime client is getting those fields that we just go on over, getting that data into the system, getting it in there nice, easily, and clean as possible, that really sets the foundation for using Param in the future and getting your team in. Again, setting it up before you're granting them access. Um, that way you're not messing with things and they're not getting you know a bunch of weird notifications, really understanding the system, then granting them access. Um, so this is certainly something that's worth understanding. And of course, understanding as you if you're growing and starting to you know bring in more data or it needs to uh, get more people to start managing people's profiles and that sort of thing